Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Shack. Hello and welcome to this video on drawing pie charts. For this lesson you are going to need these bits of equipment. You are going to need a compass and a protractor. Before we get going, I'd like you to have a go at these starter questions. So pause the video, have a go at these starter questions and then restart the video when you're ready to continue. It's really important that you have a go at these. So pause the video now and have a go at them. Okay, how did you get on? Well, let's mark it now. So it says work out these equivalent fractions. So with equivalent fractions, you are finding fractions that look a little bit different but have exactly the same value. So we're trying to find a fraction that is um, has the same value as 8 36 but looks different and has a denominator of 360. So here we've multiplied 36 by 10 to get 360. So whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top and we need to get 80 on top. Here, I want my 61 180ths to instead be over 360. It's still gonna have the same value, it's just gonna look slightly different. How do I do this? I need to multiply the bottom by two, and whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top, so I get 122 on top. Here I want my 11 90ths to be a fraction over 360 instead. How do I do that? I multiply my 90 by 4 to get 360 and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top, so I get 44. Hopefully you're getting the idea now. How many 12s in 360? Well, let's make it easier and say how many 12s in 36? There's 3, so how many 12s in 360? There's 30. So I'm going to do the same to the top, multiply the same uh, the top by 30 as well. 5 multiplied by 3 is 15, so 5 multiplied by 30 is 150. Here, how many 6s in 36? Well, that is 6. And therefore, how many 60s in 360 is also 6. So 6 lots of 60 is 360. So I'm multiplying the top by 6 as well, and I get 66. How many 12s in 36? 3, which means that there must be 3 120s in 360. And 7 3s are 21. How many 6s in 36? 6. But I'm not um, figuring out how, out how many 6s in 36. I'm figuring out how many 6s in 360. So therefore, I need to multiply by 60 here. And 1 multiplied by 60 is 60. How many 3s in 36? Well, that is 12. But I'm not figuring out how many 3s in 36. I'm figuring out how many 30s in 360. But there are still only 12 30s in 360. So I'm going to multiply the top by 12 as well. And I get 7 12s are 84. OK, hopefully you got those right, because they're really important. For today's lesson. You might have noticed that I was trying to get an equivalent fraction over 360 each time. And can you think about what we did in yesterday's lesson, which makes it important for us to find fractions that are out of 360? Well, can you remember that yesterday we looked at the fact that we're going to be using a protractor in today's lesson? And you've probably, or hopefully, you've got a half protractor like this. But what happens when we want a full turn? How many degrees is that? 
360 in your full turn there. 360, let me get it back at zero actually. There is my zero point at the top and there's that crucial number 360. And we need that number to be able to draw pie charts today. So let's have a look at how we draw pie charts. So normally I would do a lesson where you all ask each other a survey question. For example, what type of movie do you like? Or what type of um, pizza topping do you like? Something like that. And you would ask each other that question and collect some data. Now, obviously, we can't do that at the moment, so I'm going to show you an example here of something that can be counted either in the home or in the garden. So you can see here, I've got some data in terms of numbers of the numbers of trees, shrubs, wildflowers and plant pots in the garden. And I'm going to show these on a pie chart. So let's start with the number of trees. So there are six trees. And you can see a total here of 36 objects or bits of wildlife in the garden. So to work out the angle, we're going to do the frequency, which is six here out of the total, which is 36. Now we know that in a pie chart, we've got a full turn. So this is an angle of 360 degrees, if you think about the full pie chart that we're going to draw. So here I can really easily make an equivalent fraction over 360 here, and that will give me an angle on top here and what will go in here will be the angle that I will draw. So you can see here I've just multiplied by 10. So I'm going to do exactly the same here and that is going to be a 60 degree angle for that. And same with this one, 10 out of my total 36 gives me an equivalent fraction of 100. So 100 degrees is going to be my angle there. 60 degrees is going to be my angle there. Here, I've got 8 out of 36. So times top and bottom by 10. Gives me an angle of 80 degrees. And then 12 out of 36. Gives me an angle of 120 degrees there. And they should add up to 360 degrees there, that's 60, 180 and 180. And I can see that they do. So let's draw this. So I would like you to open out your compass to around 6 or so centimetres. That should make it an, a fairly uh, big circle. So open out your compass to around five or six centimetres, like so. And then we're going to draw a, a circle. So put this in the hand that you write with, a bit like this. And then choose a suitable point in the middle of your page and put some pressure in this part of the compass. And then you can turn your page like so. And that draws your circle for you. And there you have it, a pie chart ready to draw. I would always recommend that whilst you can still see the little hole that your compass made, draw a line from that centre point up to the top. Usually on exam or test papers this is actually there for you already. But as we're drawing our own one today, let's do that. Then we need to draw a 60 degree angle. So you normally have the protractor like that, but because we need to measure from zero round here, turn 
your protractor this way. Match up that point there, the really important point there, with that there, the centre point there. And also make sure that the line that we drew a moment ago matches up with the zero degree point as well. Okay, not the bottom of the protractor like that, but with the zero degree point. And we're going to start off by measuring a 60 degree angle. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And there's my 60 degree angle. I've just made a little mark there. And then draw, join up the center with that mark there. And that is the section representing trees. Let's do the same for shrubs. So now moving round, and it might help if you turn your page, okay? So turn it however it helps you to read from your protractor. So now I'm going to read from my protractor this way, okay? I'm going to put the centre point on there, like that, and I'm going to measure 100 degrees round, all the way around to 100 degrees. And join up the centre point with that angle marking there. And that is shrubs. Keep going round. So what we're doing next, we're doing an 80 degree angle for the wildflowers. So I've, I've matched up the centre there with the centre of my pie chart and the zero degree angle there, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 80, because that was my next angle for wildflowers. You can see here that I had an 80 degree angle for wildflowers. And finally, plant pots. But in actual fact, you end up getting the, the final, what is called, sector of the pie chart gets done automatically for you, because if you've done all the others correctly, then that one falls into place quite nicely. So plant pots. And there you have it. And you can colour these sections accordingly in different colours and colour code your categories there as well to make it look nice. So that is how you draw a pie chart. Please listen out for some other points in the remainder of the video because I'm going to explain how to um, come up with an angle if you haven't got a denominator here that goes nicely into 360 degrees like I've chosen here. So listen out carefully for further details about pie charts in the rest of the video. Okay, to finish off that pie chart, like I said, it's always nice to colour code. So this is the pie chart that I drew. I've just now done it on my computer screen. So let's finish it off by colour coding. And I'm going to use this key. And this is what you're also going to have to put in your pie chart as well, a key. So I'm going to colour in the tree sector of my pie chart in pink like that. I'm going to colour in the shrub section in yellow, like it says in my key, and I'm going to colour in the wildflower section in turquoise, and the plant pots in green. And that's how you need to finish off your pie chart. So colouring it in and making sure you have a key like this to describe what each section is. Okay, so your task is on a plain piece of paper to draw your own pie chart using data you collect from within your home. Your work should show a title, a table showing the angles, a pie chart and a key. So basically, all the things that I've got here. I've got my title here. I've got a table here showing the categories of things or pieces of wildlife in the garden. 
I've got the frequency. That basically means the number. So I've got six trees. That's just basically the number of trees. Frequency means number. And I've got the angle. So I've got six out of my 36. Where did I get 36 from? Do you remember in the video just before? That was the total of all these numbers. Six plus 10 plus eight plus 12. All add up to 36. It's the total. So whatever total you have is your number on your denominator there. And then you find a, an equivalent fraction to th uh, over 360, and that is the angle you draw there. That 60 degree angle is the angle you draw. That 100 is the angle you draw. Okay, so you can see in that example, I chose a factor of, 30, of 360. So the denominator of the fraction that I chose just in the example before was 36, and that is a factor of 30, uh, 360. But so here is 30. So 30 here is a factor of 360. Um, so it goes in nicely and it goes in 12, 12 times and that's why I've multiplied the top by 12 as well. So here's another example. It says, I looked out my window and then did a survey of the modes of transport passing my house between 11.30 and 11.50. So um, I've got a table here and when you do yours in a moment, I would like you to have a tally column as well okay here I've not done tally column just because I've not got enough room to do that and my pie chart in a moment so I looked out my window and I looked to see whether there was there were cars passing bikes passing walkers passing or some other mode of transport and these were the figures that I got so seven cars 11 bikes nine people walking and three people doing something else maybe skateboarding or something like that and that happens to add up to 30. Now 30 is a factor of 360, so I could just work out an equivalent fraction here, and that gives me my angle, 84 degrees. So once you've got your angles, you are gonna get your compass and draw a circle. Okay, so I'm gonna do that here. And I'm going to draw a circle here for my pie charts. That's what you're going to do. Get a protractor. Make it a little bit smaller. <laughs> and remember what I said in that previous video, turn it vertically. Oh, we haven't drawn our line yet. Our vertical line from the centre upwards. Measure an angle of 84 degrees. 84 degrees is there. And it automatically does a nice line there for me for 84 degrees. Keep turning your protractor around. I'm gonna do 132 now. 132 from here. Make sure that your protractor is lined up and then count from here all the way around to 132. 132 is there. Then I'm going to do, I keep turning around and I'm going to do 108 degrees from here. So 108 degrees to here. That's 108 degrees there. And there we go. So you would then label this pie chart like so. So this is B cars. Okay. So label each of these parts. And then once you've done that, you can colour code them. Ooh, not quite like that, but you can colour them in like so, obviously much neater than me. And then make sure you have a key. This is called a key. So you can see here I've coloured in this section in pink and pink represents the cars. So label the section, car, bike, walk and other, colour them in and make sure you've got a key going on to explain that. Now the next example I'm going to show you is where the denominator is not a factor of 360 and of course this is quite likely to happen for you because it's quite hard just to get a, a number of um, that is, that is exactly a factor of 360. You know, 30 things might not pass your house. 
only seven things might pass your house or 11 things or 19 things. And then how do you get an angle? Well, I'm going to show you now. So this is example two. So imagine now if you've got seven cars passing, eight bikes passing, five walkers and two others. So what you do is you get the total, which is seven plus eight plus five plus two, which is 22. And you put your number over the total, 22, and multiply by 360. Now this doesn't give you a nice angle sometimes. So you can see here, my number of cars, seven, out of the total, 22, multiplied by 360, gave me 114.54. Now you can't draw that angle very easily. So I have in this case rounded it to 115. Here, I had eight bikes passing out of my total of 22, multiply it by 360, and that gave me 130.9, which I'm gonna round to 131. And same with here. So all these red angles are the ones that I would draw. Now these red angles happen to, happen to add up to 361. And that's okay, that's okay. It might take you, you know, make your pie chart ever so slightly inaccurate, but it's as, as close as it can be. And that's perfectly acceptable from, from a test point of view because you can't always have a perfect factor of 360 on your denominator. And that's, that's, that's fine. So your task is to draw your own pie chart using data you collect from within your home. And I would like to see on a piece of A4 paper, a title, a table showing the angles, a pie chart coloured in, and a key. Now you might think, well, what am I going to take, uh, get my data from? Well, here are some examples of things you could take data of. Okay, you could do what I did in my first example, look at the wildlife in your garden perhaps, count the number of trees, shrubs, pots, flowers, or others. And you don't have to choose the same categories as me, you could have different categories if you want. Take a tally, give the frequency as a number, and then work out the angle. So I've given you two scenarios for angles, one where the denominator is a factor of 360, and the other where the denominator is not a factor of 360. So you can use whichever one of those applies to your situation. If you don't want to um, go out in the garden, then you could get a book and you could count the number of letters in each word on a page. So, and then put a tally for the number of words with three letters or less, the number of words with four letters, and so on, and the number of letters, uh, number of words, sorry, with seven or more letters. And again, the same applies there for your angles. If you don't want to do a book, you could um, look at the TV guide and look at the types of program on one channel on TV in one day. So you could look at the number of news um, programs, the number of sports programs, game show programs, documentaries or other. You might notice also that I'm, I'm using this category other at the bottom here and that's actually a really helpful thing to do because if, if something doesn't apply to one of these categories then you can always just put a tally under other. Or finally from a, a safe point, uh, point uh, such as out, uh, looking out your window you could count the modes of transport passing your house and by modes of transport don't get confused with the word the average mode that we looked at last week this is just basically types of transport. So modes of transport is the same as the same types of transport. Passing your house in a 20 minute period. You could look at cars, buses, bikes, walking or other. Again, you don't have to use the same categories as me. You can choose your own. So they're just some ideas. If you want to do a different idea, by all means, do so. My only recommendation would be don't have too many categories, okay? Four or five categories, such as car, bike, bus, walking and other, works quite well for a pie chart. You don't want to have 20 categories for a pie chart because that's just going to make it have too many sections. So, to repeat, that is your task. I'd like to see a pie chart with a title, a table showing the angles, nicely coloured in pie chart with a key.